بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. We have integral x from 0 to 1 of the inverse tangent of x over 1 plus x squared times the dilogarithm of 1 minus x over 1 plus x. Let's start by doing the change of variables. y equal to 1 minus x over 1 plus x. Then x is equal to 1 minus y over 1 plus y. When x is 0, y is 1. When x is 1, y is 0. dx is minus 2 dy over 1 plus y squared. We can use this minus sign to have the integral with respect to y from 0 to 1. This part here is dx without the minus sign. When we multiply, we get 1 plus y plus 1 minus y all squared. That's 4. 2 over 4 is 1 half. The inverse tangent of 1 minus y over 1 plus y is the inverse tangent of 1 minus the inverse tangent of y. The inverse tangent of 1 is pi over 4. We obtain pi over 8, integral y from 0 to 1 of the dilogarithm of y, minus 1 half integral y from 0 to 1 of the inverse tangent of y times the dilogarithm of y. What is the antiderivative of the dilogarithm function? Let's do integration by parts. We have x times the dilogarithm of x minus the integral of x times the derivative of the dilogarithm. The dilogarithm of x is integral u from 0 to x of minus log 1 minus u over u. The derivative of the dilogarithm with respect to x is 1 times minus log 1 minus x over x. We get the integral of log 1 minus x. This can be written as minus integral log 1 minus x d 1 minus x. Let's do integration by parts again. We obtain minus 1 minus x log 1 minus x plus integral 1 minus x times the derivative of log 1 minus x, which is minus 1 over 1 minus x. This is minus x. The antiderivative of dilogarithm of x is x times the dilogarithm of x minus x minus 1 minus x log 1 minus x plus integration constant. We need to integrate the dilogarithm from 0 to 1. When x is 0, this function of x is equal to 0. We need now to take the limit of this function of x as x tends to 1 from below. This is equal to the limit of x log x as x tends to 0 from above. We can write x log x as log x over 1 over x. When x tends to 0 from above, log x tends to minus infinity. 1 over x tends to infinity. We have an infinity over infinity situation. Applying L'Hopital's rule, this limit is limit as x tends to 0 from above of 1 over x over minus 1 over x squared. That's minus the limit of x as x tends to 0, which is 0. So in this integral, when we consider the upper limit of integration 1, we get 1 times the dilogarithm of 1 minus 1. When the magnitude of z is less than or equal to 1, the dilogarithm of z is summation over positive integer n of z to the n over n squared. The dilogarithm of 1 is zeta of 2, which is pi squared over 6. This part here is equal to pi over 8 between brackets pi squared over 6 minus 1. This is pi cubed over 48 minus pi over 8. We need now to focus on this integral where the integrand is the product of the inverse tangent and the dilogarithm functions. The first step is integration by parts. When x is 0, this function is equal to 0. When x is 1, we get pi over 4 times pi squared over 6. We also obtain minus integral x from 0 to 1 x times the derivative of this product with respect to x. This is dilogarithm of x over 1 plus x squared minus the inverse tangent of x log 1 minus x over x. This integral is pi cubed over 24 plus integral x from 0 to 1, the inverse tangent of x log 1 minus x minus integral x from 0 to 1, x times the dilogarithm of x divided by 1 plus x squared. This integral is handled on the next page. Integral log 1 minus x is minus integral log u, where u is equal to 1 minus x. Integrating by parts, we get minus u log u plus integral u times the derivative of log u. This is minus u log u plus u. U is 1 minus x, so the antiderivative of log 1 minus x is minus 1 minus x log 1 minus x minus x plus integration constant c. This integral can be written as integral x from 0 to 1 of the inverse tangent of x, d minus 1 minus x log 1 minus x minus x. This bracket times inverse tangent x at x equals 0 is 0. As x tends to 1 from below, we know from the previous page that this part tends to 0. So when we use the upper limit of integration, we get minus the inverse tangent of 1, which is minus 5 over 4. We also obtain integral x from 0 to 1 x plus 1, 1 minus x log 1 minus x divided by 1 plus x squared. We can split this into three integrals, x from 0 to 1 of x over 1 plus x squared. The antiderivative is 1 half log 1 plus x squared. Using the limits of integration, we get log 2 over 2. Then we have integral x from 0 to 1, log 1 minus x over 1 plus x squared. The third integral is x from 0 to 1 of minus x log 1 minus x over 1 plus x squared. To evaluate this integral, we need integral x from 0 to 1, log 1 plus x over 1 plus x squared. So let's consider this first. Use the substitution x equal to 1 minus y over 1 plus y. We get integral y from 0 to 1. 2 over 1 plus y squared. We have log 1 plus x, which is 1 plus y plus 1 minus y over 1 plus y. Downstairs, we have 1 plus 1 minus y squared over 1 plus y squared. When we multiply, we get 1 plus y squared plus 1 minus y squared. That's 2 plus 2y squared. We obtain integral y from 0 to 1. Log 2 over 1 plus y over 1 plus y squared. This logarithm is log 2 minus log 1 plus y. Split into two integrals, we obtain log 2 integral y from 0 to 1, 1 over 1 plus y squared, minus integral y from 0 to 1, log 1 plus y over 1 plus y squared. This integral is exactly what we have on the left-hand side, but with a minus sign, 
So two times integral x from zero to one, log one plus x over one plus x squared is log two times pi over four. This integral is equal to pi log two over eight. Let's now go back to this integral with minus sign. Use the same change of variables x equal to one minus y over one plus one. Because we have minus sign here in the numerator, we get log two y over one plus one, which is log two plus log y minus log one plus one. We split into three integrals. We have log two integral y from zero to one of one over one plus y squared. This is by log two over four. Then we have minus this integral. That's minus y log two over eight. We also have integral y from zero to one log y over one plus y squared. To evaluate this integral, we use this very useful result. Integral x from zero to one, x to the power a times log x to the power b is minus one to the power b gamma of b plus one over a plus one to the power b plus one. To employ this result in this integral, write down one over one plus y squared as summation j from zero to infinity minus one to the power j y squared to the power j. This is valid as y has a magnitude less than one. Now integrate term by term. We have summation j from zero to infinity minus one to the power j integral y from zero to one y to the power two j log y. So b is equal to one. A is equal to two j. The result of this integral is minus one times gamma of two, which is one, divided by two j plus one squared. This integral is summation over non-negative integer j of minus one to the power j plus one over two j plus one squared. This is minus one over one squared plus one over three squared minus one over five squared plus one over seven squared, and so forth. This is Catalan's constant g times minus one. So this integral is by log two over eight minus g. What about this integral? Note that log one minus x is equal to log one minus x squared times one half plus one half log one minus x over one plus x. To evaluate this integral, we first consider these two. For this one, we use the change of variables x equal to one minus y over one plus y. We obtain integral y from zero to one, one minus y over one plus y, log y over one plus y squared. Note that one minus y over one plus y times one plus y squared is equal to one over one plus y minus y over one plus y squared. We split into two integrals, do series expansion, integrate term by term, employing this result here. We get summation g from zero to infinity, minus one to the power g, integral y from zero to one, of y to the g log y, minus summation over non-negative integer g, of minus one to the power g, integral y from zero to one, of y to the two g plus one times log y. We have summation g from zero to infinity, minus one to the power g plus one over g plus one all squared, minus summation g from zero to infinity, minus one to the power g plus one over two g plus two squared. Take two as a common vector and combine the sums. We have three fourths summation g from zero to infinity minus one to the g plus one over g plus one squared. This sum is minus zeta of two over two. So we have three over four times minus one half times pi squared over six. This is minus pi squared over 16. In the integral with log one minus x squared, use the substitution x squared is equal to one minus y over one plus y. So one minus x squared is two y over one plus y. One plus x squared is two over one plus y x dx is minus dy over one plus y squared. When we apply the logarithm to this ratio, we get log two plus log y minus log one plus y. We have three integrals, log two over two, integral y from zero to one of one over one plus y. The integral is log two, thus we get log two squared over two. Considering this part with one half, the antiderivative is log one plus y squared over four. When y is zero, we get zero. When y is one, we get minus log two squared over four. These two terms are log two squared over four. The third integral is one half integral y from zero to one log y over one plus y. This is one half times this sum, which is minus zeta of two over two. We obtain minus pi squared over 24. This is our integral of interest. It's this part over two plus that one over two. The value of this integral is log two squared over eight minus five pi squared over 96. Combining all results, this is integral x from zero to one of the inverse tangent of x times log one minus x. This is the integral of interest. On the first page, we obtained that it is equal to pi cubed over 48 minus pi over eight minus one half integral x from zero to one of the inverse tangent of x times the dilogarithm of x. Also on the first page, we obtained that this integral is pi cubed over 24 plus this integral obtained on the second page minus integral x from zero to one x times the dilogarithm of x over one plus x squared. To evaluate this integral, we use the following integral representation of the dilogarithm of x. Dilogarithm of x is integral y from zero to one x log y over x y minus one. X and y are less than one. We can write this as minus integral y from zero to one of x log y, summation g from zero to infinity, x to the g, y to the g. Interchanging the order of operations, we obtain minus summation over non-negative integer g, x to the g plus one, integral y from zero to one, y to the g log y. By the result on the previous page, this is minus one over g plus one squared. So this integral is summation g from zero to infinity, x to the g plus one over g plus one squared, replace g by g minus one, we get summation g from one to infinity, x to the g over g squared, which is the dilogarithm of x. This part is equal to log one over y, over one minus x y, multiply numerator and denominator by x. 
this ratio is log x minus log xy over 1 minus xy split into two integrals in this double integral integrate first with respect to y we obtain minus log 1 minus x over x the double integral is equal to minus integral x from 0 to 1 x over 1 plus x squared log x log 1 minus x log 1 minus x is 1 half log 1 minus x squared multiply and divide by 1 plus x this is 1 half log 1 minus x over 1 plus x plus 1 half log 1 minus x squared split into two integrals in this integral do the change of variables u equal to x squared we obtain minus 1 half integral u from 0 to 1 u to the half log u to the half which is 1 half log u log 1 minus u over 1 plus u dx is 1 half u to the minus half du this is minus 1 over 8 integral u from 0 to 1 log u log 1 minus u over 1 plus u what about this integral do the substitution t equal to 1 minus x over 1 plus x so x is 1 minus t over 1 plus t we get minus 1 half integral t from 0 to 1 1 minus t over 1 plus t this product of logarithms become log 1 minus t over 1 plus t times log t downstairs we have 1 plus 1 minus t squared over 1 plus t squared dx without the minus sign is 2 dt over 1 plus t squared this is minus 1 half integral from 0 to 1 log t log 1 minus t over 1 plus t times 1 minus t over 1 plus t times 1 plus t squared using partial fractions this part is equal to 1 over 1 plus t minus t over 1 plus t squared split into two integrals one of them is exactly what we have on the left hand side but with the minus sign so that integral is one half this one write this logarithm as log 1 minus t minus log 1 plus t and split into two integrals combining with what we have for this integral we get that this integral is one fourth integral x from 0 to 1 of log x log 1 plus x over 1 plus x minus 3 over 8 times integral x from 0 to 1 of log x log 1 minus x over 1 plus x we already know the four integrals x from 0 to 1 log x log 1 plus or minus x over 1 plus or minus x this one is minus zeta of 3 over 8 that one is 13 zeta of 3 over 8 minus pi squared log 2 over 4 multiplying by these factors and simplifying the value of this double integral is 3 pi squared log 2 over 32 minus 41 zeta of 3 over 64 now we need to evaluate this double integral we have double integral x from 0 to 1 y from 0 to 1 x squared log xy over 1 plus x squared times 1 minus xy we obtain the same value for the double integral if we swap x and y so we can write it as one half times itself plus one half times the same double integral with x and y interchanged assuming that we can carry out the integration in any order we combine the two double integrals this sum has one plus x squared one plus y squared one minus x y in the denominator in the numerator we get x squared plus x squared y squared plus y squared plus x squared y squared the numerator can be written as 1 plus x squared times 1 plus y squared minus between brackets 1 minus x squared y squared. This is the difference between two squares. This term can be written as 1 minus xy times 1 plus xy. When we divide by these three brackets, we get 1 over 1 minus xy minus 1 plus xy over 1 plus x squared times 1 plus y squared. Split into two integrals. This integral is this sum these two double integrals are equal so we can just write two times this one if we integrate first with respect to y we get minus two integral x from zero to one log x log one minus x over x this is minus integral x from zero to one log one minus x d log x squared several applications of L'Hopital's rule show that limit as x tends to zero from above of log x squared log one minus x is zero limit as x tends to one from below of log x squared log one minus x is also zero when we do integration by parts, we get integral x from 0 to 1, the square of log x, times the derivative of log 1 minus x, that's minus 1 over 1 minus x. 1 over 1 minus x is summation g from 0 to infinity x to the power g. Integrating term by term, we have this integral. Recall that from the second page, we have integral x from 0 to 1, x to the a, log x to the b, is minus 1 to the b, gamma of b plus 1, over a plus 1 to the power b plus 1. In this particular case, b is equal to 2, a is equal to g. So the numerator is gamma of 3, which is 2. The denominator is g plus 1 cubed this double integral is minus 2 zeta of 3. Regarding this integral, the first step is like the first step here. We can write log xy as log x plus log y. We have two equal double integrals. Thus, this double integral is 2 times integral x from 0 to 1, y from 0 to 1, 1 plus xy log x over 1 plus x squared times 1 plus y squared. The numerator is log x plus xy log x. We split into two integrals. Here, if we integrate with respect to y, we get pi over 4. The integral with respect to x is on the second page. It is equal to minus Catalan's constant g. So this part is equal to minus 5g over 2. Here, if we integrate with respect to y, considering this 2, we obtain log 2. 
we have a friend from the second page equal to minus pi squared over 48. So this double integral is minus pi g over 2 minus pi squared log 2 over 48. Multiplying this result by 1 half, that one by minus 1 half, we obtain this double integral. Consequently, we now have a value for the integral x from 0 to 1, x times the dilogarithm of x over 1 plus x squared. We can now go back to the integral x from 0 to 1 of the inverse tangent of x times the dilogarithm of x, then to the main integral of interest, the integral x from 0 to 1, the inverse tangent of x times the dilogarithm of 1 minus x over 1 plus x, all over 1 plus x squared. Its value has these eight terms, g over 2 minus pi g over 8 plus zeta of 3 times 23 over 128. Then we have log 2 multiplied by pi squared over 24 minus pi over 16 minus 1 over 4 plus log 2 squared over 16 minus 5 pi squared over 192.